The governor <laughs> does want to cut all kinds of taxes, the income tax and the sales tax overall, but to help pay for those cuts, he wants to impose those new taxes. The sales, here's that list. It is pretty long. Take a look. Pet grooming, tugboats would now be taxed, lower loan brokers would be taxed, ticker tape reporting, if we even still have that, that would be taxed, dating services, debt counseling, mailbox rentals, advertising agency fees, if you have to get bailed out, you pay a tax, magazine subscriptions, mailroom services, uh, sales of time and space and advertising, PR, management consulting, uh, parking lots, garages, tickets to the Blue Jackets and to OSU. Football, bowling alleys, cable TV, pinball machines are taxed, attorneys, data miners are taxed, public relations, even trailer parks. The governor says it's a good list and he's ready for a fight. We think this is good for small business. We think this is good for economic growth. There will be some special interests who will not think it's better. They will come to the legislature and they will pound on people. I just want to make it clear, when they win, the people of the state lose. Gene Krebs, you're a, what you call a recovering lawmaker. Yes. Are folks going to get pounded on, as the governor said, over these increased taxes? Lawyers, for instance? Yes. Uh, there's an um, old saying called, the upright nail gets hammered down. And right now you have 132 nails sitting across the street. Um, I think what you're going to see, though, is the fact we have to recognize that the society, the economic structure we have today is not your grandfather's economic structure. It's not the structure we had in the 50s and 60s. And so we're going to have to look at, say, what are the activities we are engaged in, where the impacts upon the state creates needs for us, and then how was the appropriate level of tax? Basically, we've shifted from a manufacturing-based economy, a good-based economy, to a service-based economy, right. and we haven't been taxing two-thirds of the economy. So doesn't this make sense? Is it not overdue? And it's not unlike shifting uh, back in 05, and I know that many of my good friends on the other side of the aisle have, um, you know, uh, do not like what happened with the elimination of tangible personal property tax and, the, and Bob Taft's change to the tax. It's the same thing, is that we need to go to a different style, and it's always going to be disruptive. But I, I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater here. Remember, even though I understand the argument that we've turned from a goods producing economy to a service economy, with that service economy comes much lower wages significantly, comes a larger work base and employment base of people who fall within that income threshold who are going to be adversely impacted. That's the bottom line. This also affects small businesses as well. They have to transfer those costs to the consumer. And I agree, that, the, but the small businesses are getting a nice tax cut, and I've not talked to anybody except attorneys who feel bad about attorneys getting taxed. <laughs> okay. Well, and I think even the governor made a joke about when he was asked what are some of the items that we'll be having we be on this list. This is before we saw the list, two days yeah. before we saw the list when we had the budget briefing on Monday. He listed things like architects and accountants and lobbyists. And he even joked that lobbyist is going to be something that, uh, I mean, if, of all people to be taxed, the people who are there at the state house are likely to have a, a concern about this. Jim, it is a long list. I mean, everything from dog groomers to hairstylists to lawyers and lobbyists and accountants. By having such a long list, does that help the governor win approval for this because it's divide and conquer. It does in that he can argue he's being consistent. He's not, he's not playing favorites, he's not singling folks out, uh, which is I think is more helpful than these efforts have been in the past. I know during the, the Taft administration there was an effort to raise on a few of the you know, pick and choose. This by saying, look, we're just lumping everybody in into one big group and so you should all have to you know, get pay, you know, pay the tax on, then, then you're all in the same boat. Uh, at the same time, you also notice he didn't hit any of the uh, income tax uh, exemptions that he was talking about earlier. Those, those he left alone. He said, well, you know, there are some businesses in this state that, that rely on those, and they, they kind of like having them, so we'll, we'll keep those around. But, so. The things that were exempt, though, and there were exemptions carved out, and I thought uh, a couple of them were interesting. For example, veterinarians and uh, personal instruction for golf, tennis, dance, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the tax commissioner told us that these things that were carved out were essential, things like medical and social services and housing and that sort of thing. But there are, for example, lawyers who are saying, wait a minute, we're not considered essential for people who need legal services? So that may be a little bit of a pushback there. If you're a defendant, there. I guess you would say a lawyer is <laughs> essential. If you're a plaintiff, perhaps not, but if you feel you've been wronged, and that's the deal. So, will this happen? Will legislators, will it get watered down? Will it get passed in total? Or will 
the favorites, the big money groups get theirs pulled out. Here's your problem. Speaking now as a former member of the Finance Committee, if you say, I'm going to pull this out, I now create a hole in the budget. And our Constitution requires that our budget balance, okay, at least on the day that it's passed, <laughs> okay, at least on paper that day. And if you pull that out, you're going to have to fill it in from something somewhere else. And now you're going to cause more fights going off in the circles. That means so raising taxes somewhere else, basically. Or cutting a, an essential program to yeah. something. Then all of a sudden you get those advocates weighing in. Or you switch to the LSC uh, revenue and Medicaid numbers, which are about $300 million higher than the, than the administration's, which gives you $300 million more to play with. Or you go after this, or you go after right. that. Right. Yeah, you have to guarantee. 